Hey everybody, it's Big Mess with Appalachian Flies and I wanted to talk to you about the uh, video you're about to watch. Uh, I took off and went up to a uh, location there in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park, actually Rough Fork in the Catalucci Valley uh, here in October. Uh, area that I have fished for many years, I consider it my home waters. A lot of water in that particular drainage and it's uh, certainly fall doesn't necessarily feel like fall yet. Water temps are really good right now. We did have a cold um, uh, air mask that kind of came through and it dropped the water temps there about uh, nine degrees overnight. According to the gauge at the gauging station, it's a USGS gauge that I observed there. Uh, my father-in-law and son had actually fished uh, that particular body of water, not the same stretch the day prior and they had a lot of short strikes on uh, some topwater dry flies, of course. So I had a chance to get back up there myself. I went to the upper end of the valley, parked, walked in a bit. I was getting away from all of the uh, folks up there, uh, harassing the elk and things like that. And found some peace and solitude and got on some nice fish there. It was a little bit of a struggle. However, uh, the beauty and things that you experience along the way certainly make up for that. Uh, you folks, uh, you know, enjoy the video. Let me know what you think. Stick around to the end. I will go over the flies that I use, show you the flies that I used. I do go over what I'm using in this particular video uh, in the beginning as far as gear. As far as what I recorded with, that was my iPhone with the Filmic Pro app and a GoPro Hero 9 that I had strapped to my uh, fish pond uh, Firehole backpack. So I'm doing this on a shoestring budget. If there's anything that you folks would like to see, just let me know. Uh, comment down below. And thank you for watching. Hey everybody, Big Mess here with Appalachian Flies in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park today. Going to do some, uh, do and do some fly fishing here. Hopefully get on some uh, wild brookies and some wild fish up here in the small streams in North Carolina. As you may or may not can tell behind me, it's uh, snowing some leaves. The leaves are coming down. It's October the 10th, one week until the big 5-1 hits. Uh, so y'all stick around with me and let's see what we can get into today. Okay, so just want to let you know what my gear is here this morning. I've got a Scott uh, fiberglass five-piece rod. It's a three-weight, great rod. Got it mashed up with just a little three-weight reel and a fly line, of course. I am fix fishing a little bit longer leader up here on these spookier fish. I am using a number 16 uh, caddis that I tied on my Norvice fly tying system. It's Semperfly dubbing in an orange color. There's a little short strike. Um, I'm using that. My, my goal would be to get some fish up top water, uh, but if not, then certainly maybe fish over to a small little dropper. We'll see what happens. The water temp fell quite a bit last night, kind of like Alabama going down to A&M. Uh, you know, the temperature fell a good seven degrees overnight uh, last night. So I'm actually here in my, uh, Orvis ultralight convertible waders. I do have them converted to the pants uh, because it is a little cool this, this morning here. So a um, little bit higher elevation, a lot of leaves falling down, as you can probably tell. Uh, pretty good water flow after these rains, but we'll kind of see what's in store here with us. So you just folks just kind of stick along and enjoy the video. Thank you. Mm. 
Mm. Wow. You keep stuff like this, we'll switch it up here, kind of switch up our technique and fly and uh, see if we can get into them. This water is kind of too good. I know it's early. Uh, we'll kind of, you know, sometimes the sun getting out on the water can make a difference too uh, this, this time of the year. But, uh, we'll, get, we'll get them dialed in here in just a little bit. Uh, these fish up here are just absolutely gorgeous this time of year for sure. A lot of people in here looking at the elk and stuff and uh, all, all the wildlife. Uh, and actually there was a sign that uh, campsite 41 is closed due to an aggressive bear behavior. And we're not gonna be fishing up that far. I don't think we'll make it to campsite 40 uh, today. Uh, but we're just gonna cover some water up through here. Work these little seams, these little pockets and things like that. Be sure to, to hit every little spot out through here that looks fishy because these, these fish will hold in uh, various locations. We caught a stick right there, so hey, look at there. Big mess with the stick. Where is this here first? See how the leaves are coming down. Oh, look at that. <laughs> oh, we'll let that one go. Woo, Dicky Mo, baby. <laughs> it's two of those I've caught like that. That was smaller than the one just a while ago that you guys did not see on camera. So, starting to get some fish rise up to this, but I need their uh, great ancestors as far as size. Um, but that's promising. You know, you got to have little guys to eventually go up and get big guys. Or what we consider bigger guys. I'll roll that in through there. Mm. Mm. All right, folks, so I've made a couple of changes here. Number one is I changed my Smith optics to a different lens. Um, number two is got this nice little bricky right here don't know how y'all can see that and i went to a dry dropper setup and uh this guy here is just a little old split case pmd it was the closest thing i had right here i, I like the size of it and thought i'd grab it right quick and whammo it's in a short amount of time hooked up on that one i had another sip and spit down there that i totally muffed um, but anyway, you know, sometimes you got to go outside the box a little bit, but I do like to wear my Smith Optics guide choices and I have two different lenses. So I carry two pairs of glasses with me. This one is a low light igniter glass lens and I can see tons, tons better. Uh, so maybe we've turned a corner here and we'll see if we can get on some more fish. Oh, on the top one. There we go. Starting to pick up. That was a good aggressive hit too. Good aggressive take. I like that. We've got this uh, orange stimulator here with this Poly Pro yarn from Superfly. Right through there. Oh, little guy. Need his daddy. There we go. A little better. Yeah, now business is starting to pick up a little bit. Nice little rainbow. Yeah. Yeah. And there he goes. Just like that. Heck yeah. Now we're cooking a little bit. Awesome. Oh no. Got to be one of the absolute smallest hill brookies today. Oh man, what a beautiful fish. Awesome. Little barbless hook right there. Get it back in the water and let them grow up. A little better on this guy here. What do we got? We got rainbow. 
Yeah. Ah, there he is, right in front of me. What do y'all think about that? Oh, and he's gone. Just like that, folks. Ha ha, there we go. Oh, and he's off. LDR. A little bit better on this guy. There we go. Might even have to get the, the Brady's net out on this one here. Definitely, definitely the um, the little nymph there by far has been a great option for me today. Right there, see, so kind of come off it being barbless. Um, <laughs> appropriate that the rod falls in the net, but you know, don't know how much of this y'all can see. Water's nice and cold. You know, we got some awesome fish out here in the. Great Smoky Mountains National Park. Big shoots. Shout out to Josh Brady at Brady's Handmade Nets, folks. If you're looking for a custom net, you got to hit Josh Brady up. I think it's Brady's Handmade Nets.com. If y'all have any questions about that, you can hit me up at Appalachian Flies at gmail.com and I can get you hooked up with Josh. Look at this guy. <clears throat> On the nymph. Look at these colors, folks. Mm-hmm. Oh. Does it get any better than that, folks? Let's get over here to the side. Oh, my heavens. big mess got lucky today folks set the sky over here out of the way all right wet my hands looks like he is still hooked someone's gonna easily pop that out right quick got a little water spider as well oh my heaven Folks, I don't know if y'all, how well y'all can see that. That is just one of the most amazing specimens of fish that I think there is. And rightfully so, he's gone. Thanks for joining me on that, folks. Well, I hope you folks enjoyed that video and uh, boy, that, uh, that last uh, brook trout right there was just amazing. The colors were spectacular. It was a great eat. Glad I got to share that with you folks there. Um, the flies that, that really did the best for me are the two I'm going to show you here. Right now, my Norvice fly tie-in system. I have this uh, little, about a size 16 beaded uh, split case nymph. Uh, worked well. Honestly, I went more for size and just trying to imitate some of the color of the casings that I've seen on some of the rocks in the bottom of the stream bed. Uh, the fact that it was just had a split case on it, which just by happenstance, it wasn't planned. I just grabbed it and, and, and it was the first snip that I put on and it started working immediately. So I definitely stuck with that. I think it just kind of goes to show that it, you don't have to be exact when you're out there. You just have to have something at least here where we're located at that's going to you know catch the rise for sure and then uh, as far as up top i started with a uh, number 16 uh, caddis that i tied and they they just really they would look at it they would short strike it they they just really would not do a whole lot with it i went to another caddis that i had tied it's a little bigger and ultimately i i said i'm going to go go ahead and go to a bigger stimulator type pattern 
and I was going to focus on subsurface because to me it was apparent those fish were not going to do much up top. When I made that change and I went to this particular pattern here, just your basic stimulator tied using the uh, Simperfly dry fly poly yarn, which is fantastic. It worked really well. So that uh, with my dropper about two feet down below that, unweighted other than the bead that's on it. And then as we got further into the day, they were actually taking the uh, stimulator up top. So there you go. Uh, that's what I was using this time of year. Thank you folks once again for watching this video. If you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. I'd really appreciate that. And I will catch you folks on the next video. Y'all have a great one out there.